A common perception about our furry friends is that dogs are more active and demanding pets, while cats are more laid back and can tend to keep to themselves. This has led to a distinction between cat people and dog people, with many viewing cats and dogs as opposites. However, if you've been around a dozen or so cats in your life, you've probably known one or two who don't exactly fit the mold. Indeed, while cats will almost certainly have less energy than dogs, there are plenty of cats that want to be with you at all time and will immediately start crying if you so much as leave the room. Even if you disregard these outliers, most cats like to be pet, play, and cuddle every so often. Part of the perception of cats as being indifferent may come down to our own bias. Dogs convey emotions through facial expressions, which we can easily recognize, while many cats have this permanent angry face. Of course, this is because cats can't articulate their faces, so it doesn't matter if they're absolutely thrilled about getting their favorite treat, or seeing their owner when they get home, cats will have that same expression. Of course, it only makes sense that dogs would use facial expressions, since their ancestor, the wolf, is a pack animal, so the members had to convey emotions to one another. Meanwhile, the wildcat is a solitary animal, so it wouldn't have a need to articulate its facial expression to show how it's feeling. However, the mistake a lot of people make is assuming that since house cats were domesticated from a solitary ancestor, this makes them non-social by default. The problem with this assumption is that even though its evolutionary history can influence an animal's behavior, sometimes even making it behave in a way that's maladaptive to its current predicament, they aren't bound to it. Evolution doesn't produce changes, quote-unquote, only within limits. Darwin also said that artificial selection and evolution by natural selection operate via the same mechanism. It's just that between the two, you have different sources of selective pressure. Why is this relevant to cats and dogs? Well, even though the wild animal that we domesticated dogs from is social, the common ancestor of cats and dogs, which lived about 40 million years ago, was in all likelihood solitary. This means that at some point on the lineage leading to dogs, the natural environment, for whatever reason, began selecting for individuals who tended to interact and cooperate more. One generation after another, the distant ancestors of dogs would have become more and more social until they became a pack animal. Similarly, even though the wildcat is solitary, once they had become domesticated, we would have, intentionally or unintentionally, selected for individuals who had a greater propensity to interact and socialize, thus making it more likely that they would reproduce. And that's the problem with viewing behavioral attributes of an animal as intrinsic. Many behaviors can be altered by domestication. For example, male wolves care for their young, while male dogs don't exhibit paternal instincts. On top of that, in close relatives of the wolf, such as jackals, the males care for the young, implying this feature goes millions of years back. Furthermore, we see social behavior evolving many times in mammals, even in other felids like lions, indicating that this transition isn't particularly difficult. Just as natural selection turned the distant ancestors of dogs into a social species millions of years ago, artificial selection is turning cats into a social animal now, and assuming that because the wild ancestor of the domestic cat was solitary, they'll all act the same way, is taking an overly static view of behavioral ecology. In that sense, the domestic cat can be thought of as a transitional form, which can explain why, despite their different evolutionary history, there's still quite a bit of overlap between the most extroverted cats and the most introverted dogs.